31 zu 0. Wenn das die Antwort ist auf die Frage, wie viel steht es denn gerade, dann ist das eigentlich ein Scherz. Aber nicht, wenn American Samoa spielt. Das ist nämlich offiziell die schlechteste Fußballmannschaft, die es überhaupt gibt. Grund genug, eine Dokumentation darüber zu machen. Next Goal Wins von Mike Brad and Steve Jamison. Thanks for having you here. Thank you. Um, what does mean soccer to you personally? Wow, what a, a huge question to begin with. Um, soccer represents so many things. It brought Mike and I together. We met playing soccer together at university and then I think Mike and I have always said that you know we're very fortunate. You know, doing what we do, we get to travel the world a lot, and, it, and it's a it's a universal language. It doesn't matter where you are, on what continent, you can strike up a conversation with somebody about soccer. And uh, and Mike and I have always felt that it's an incredibly powerful sport in that sense. And I suppose um, what we've been working in the, uh, for a few years in the kind of the commercial arena around football, and what we wanted to do with this film was really discover that soul of, of, of why football has this power to bring people together or there's a universal love of, of this sport and we wanted to try and capture that. So you didn't want to make the movie because you wanted to make fun of the uh, Samoan team? or Absolutely not, no. I mean, I think Steve kind of hit the nail on the head there that um, a lot of, you know, we see a lot of professionals obviously here in Germany and also in, in England and, and, and Spain and so on, multi-millionaire guys who get paid huge sums of money. But they kind of have almost forgotten why they played the game in the first place, why they loved it. And we, and we said to ourselves, well, hang on, who, who loves football more than anyone else in the world? It's got to be these guys because, you know, they've been playing for 17 years. They've never won a game. Um, they, they basically lost 31-0, which is a world record, obviously, against Australia back in 2001. And, but we didn't go there thinking, well, let's laugh at these guys. We went there saying, how inspirational is it to all of us guys that, that they still want to play regardless of what the result is? There was something very famous that their coach said at the time. He said, football is a game of three possibilities, win, lose or tie. For us, football is a game of one possibility, lose. Um, and, and I think we, we wanted to understand that philosophy of, of why you still play regardless of, of knowing that you're going to you're going to lose every time okay so what is else special about the team except from that they're the worst team everything well, <laughs> I, I suppose as a, as a filmmaker that's the question you're asking yourself before you go they on paper their team stories was amazing they'd lost every game they'd ever played as Mike says they're the bottom of FIFA's rankings um, but unless you get you find characters when you go there you, you definitely don't have a film and And so we went there really as a, as a reconnaissance mission and, and we were very, very, um, uh, very lucky to find the characters we did on the island. The, the goalkeeper who um, was still playing for the team was the goalkeeper from that 31 to nothing uh, loss. He has collected the ball from the goal more times than any other goalkeeper in history. And yet he loves this sport. And he lives in Seattle, travels to America Samoa thousands of miles every time to, to, to lose a game, knowing he'll lose a game. And then we also discovered uh, Jaya Sayalua, who was the first in the, throughout the course of the movie, becomes the first ever transgender footballer to play in a, a FIFA international match, which was a huge landmark. And, and her story throughout the film is a, an incredibly important thread. And, and it's one that we're you know, very happy to talk, talk about and tell her story around the world because it's important for not just football, but for all sports. So how was the relationship between you and the guys uh, when they are so like different? It's, 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 it's great. I mean, I, I have to say when we were there, it was amazing because, as you say, I think there was maybe a bit of fear that we were, we were there to make fun of them, which was never the intention. But on the first day, um, when they'd all finished the training sessions and they all went in to get changed, we kind of looked at each other and there was footballs on the pitch and we, we ran out and started playing because you have to, right? Um, you're in the South Pacific with this beautiful pitch and the guys actually started coming out of the changing room and joined in and played with us. So instantly we built that really close relationship and we still have this today. What, how would you describe the message of the movie? I definitely don't want to ruin the movie for anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, I will tell you that some pretty amazing things happen. You know, this, is, this isn't a, a, fil a film about a bunch of losers, either in sport or in life. Uh, and I think that, um, th and, and we've often said this, this, this really isn't a movie about football. You know, it's, uh, it, it is a movie about life and it's almost, the football is a metaphor for, for how we approach things. I think our time uh, in Samoa really changed us. And, and also Thomas Rongen, the American coach who comes in and works with the guys, He's, he's a pretty hard guy, you know, he worked at the very highest level with the US Soccer Federation and, and he came in there and he really clashed with the players because at first he didn't really get the culture and over a period of time he really came to see life differently and I think that's exactly what we experienced behind the camera as well. Um, so yeah, I think it's, uh, if you watch this movie I think you'll, you'll laugh, you'll cry and I think you'll also come out changed in your perspective on the world. And what was the motivation for the trainer to actually, or for the coach to, to actually uh, be there? Thomas sadly lost uh, 
uh, his daughter in a car accident when she was 18 and, and, and never really took the time to, to grieve after that um, and went back into you know, the, the most intense environment which is, which is professional football. Um, he won the MLS a couple of times uh, but like I say never really took the time away personally to grieve over the loss of his daughter. Um, and when he went to the island there was definitely a sense of catharsis that uh, he went there um, I suppose to take time to contemplate a little bit more himself and as, as Mike said he, he came to the island and was a very tough cookie. He was, he was quite hard, there was a lot of friction between him and the Federation but actually as, as time went on as he was teaching them how to win they were actually teaching him to be more contemplative, more spiritual. He's an atheist on perhaps the most religious island I've ever been to and um, they really taught him how to be spiritual and to think about his um, you know, his inner peace, I suppose, and, and that was an amazing thing to witness. So talking about football all the time, who is going to win the World Cup? <laughs> it's too late to say England. Uh, I have to say, you'd be a madman to bet against the Germans. I have to say, um, you have a very strong team. Um, we always uh, are, are very uh, impressed by, by the, the strength of your young players. I think possibly Germany. There's, there's, a, there's a bit of me that would like someone like Belgium, you know, like a, a bit of a dark horse team to kind of come through, but we'll see. Cool. Thank you, Mike. Thank, uh, thank you, Steve, for being here. Thank pleasure. you. Vielen Dank. Um, wenn ihr mehr Interviews noch sehen wollt, schaut auf unserem YouTube-Channel vorbei. Da gibt es alle Interviews vom Filmfest München 2014, AFK TV und M94.5. Ich sage tschüss. Bis bald.